Welcome in the name of Christ. God's grace, mercy and peace be with you. Jesus Christ is King of it. He lives his life in us for the sake of the world. Jesus is alive today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this week's service, we pay a visit to the final of this year's Theology Slam. The Theology Slam is an annual competition um, that puts a spotlight on talenting young voices engaging theologically with big questions of the world around us, like the environment, mental health, justice, um, the kind of stuff that a lot of people wonder about and try to think about in light of scripture and tradition. Anyone, lay or ordained, can enter between the ages of 18 and 35. We had the final last Tuesday in Leeds, which was a really exciting and inspiring event. And today's sermon comes from the winner, Amanda Higgin. She's training to be a Baptist minister at Regent's Park College in Oxford. Amanda reflected on the encouragement that the letter to the Hebrews can offer in the face of uncertainty and trauma. Even when unsettling things happen in our lives, Hebrews reminds us that there is a Sabbath rest for the people of God, if only we listen to God's voice. chapter 10, verse 23 to 25 and 32 to 39. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. But recall those earlier days when, after you had been enlightened, you endured a hard struggle with sufferings, sometimes being publicly exposed to abuse and persecution, and sometimes being partnered with those so treated. For you had compassion for those who were in prison, and you cheerfully accepted the plundering of your possessions, knowing that you yourself possess something better and more lasting. Do not, therefore, abandon that confidence of yours. It brings a great reward. For you need endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. For yet in a very little while, the one who is coming will come and will not delay, but my righteous one will live by faith. My soul takes no pleasure in anyone who sinks back. For we are not among those who shrink back and so are lost, but among those who have faith and so are saved. Thanks be to God. This world is no longer the paradise that God designed for us. 
Nor is it yet that secure golden city that God promises. In this world, we will have trouble. People get hurt, and people carry that hurt with them. I know this too well. If you'd seen me last May, you would have seen a successful, well-adjusted University of Oxford master's student in training to be a Baptist minister. What you wouldn't have seen was the hurt that I was carrying with me from an abusive relationship that I left two years before. In June, my legs gave out under the weight of that hurt. I had my first series of flashbacks. As my mental health declined, I was diagnosed with complex post-traumatic stress disorder, or CPTSD. I quit my hobbies, I bailed on plans with friends, and eventually I suspended from university. As I found myself in recovery, I found myself holding the letter to the Hebrews. This text was the subject of my aborted master's dissertation. And as I grappled with my own pain, I started to see how uncertainty and trauma underpinned this masterful, anonymous, theological address. Shelley Rambo calls trauma the suffering that does not go away. It is the hurt that remains and repeats in our souls and bodies after events of violence. In chapter 10, the author of Hebrews tells us that they are addressing a traumatized congregation. They remind their audience that they have suffered beatings, looting, and imprisonment, experiences which the members of the congregation carry with them in their souls and bodies as they listen to them speak. A young man rubs the scabs on his arm from being beaten in the street. His partner sits anxiously by him, still shaken by the cries for help that still ring in their ears. And Hebrews tells us, even those members of the congregation not directly targeted still suffered alongside those who were. This is a community carrying trauma. As Rambo puts it, their suffering has not gone away. Now, as if I was sitting in this congregation, I heard Hebrews speak to me. As the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion on the day of testing in the wilderness. For I swore an oath in my anger, they shall not enter my rest. Now, if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken later on about another day. There remains, then, a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest rests from their works, just as God did from his. Hebrews draws its text there from Psalm 95, which makes an example of that generation of Israel who wandered in the desert for 40 years after God rescued them from slavery in Egypt. The psalm calls its hearers to obedience, unlike that grumbling generation who never managed to enter the promised land. Hebrews uses this text differently, however, reading in light of Jesus' life. In chapters 3 and 4, the author goes on to explain how a Sabbath rest remains for the people of God. Not a geographical Canaan rest, but an eternal Sabbath rest which we enter following behind not Joshua, but Jesus. Hebrews does this because they receive the words of Scripture as the voice of God. I first learned this from Madison Pierce. Her work demonstrates how Hebrews receive Scripture as the voice of a triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Where other New Testament authors introduce their quotations with forms of the word gagraptai, the standard formula, meaning it is written, Hebrews instead uses the word lege, meaning he says. We've just heard how they introduce Psalm 95 with as the Holy Spirit says. In Greek, kathos lege, topnuma tohagion. By reading in this way, Hebrews discovers a message of rest 
and endurance for their traumatized congregation. In his book, The Wandering People of God, Ernst Kesemann describes how this imagery of wandering in the wilderness underpins everything that Hebrews has to say. They encourage their audience to persevere as if they themselves are stuck in the wilderness. Let us hold fast to the hope we profess, they say. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Do you ever feel like you're stuck between the pain of slavery and the promise of rest? I know that I do. In her book, Spirit and Trauma, Shelley Rambo describes trauma as a holy Saturday experience, caught in the uncertain remaining between death on Good Friday and resurrection on Easter Sunday. While Rambo's language of remaining emphasizes time, I believe Hebrews is expressing the very same thought with this geographical language of wandering. We know pain, we are promised rest, and in between, we carry trauma. Trauma is static. It makes us feel like we're still stuck on the wrong side of the Red Sea. But healing looks to the future. Rest in the promised land, resurrection on Easter Sunday. For that reason, the word recovery can actually be unhelpful. It implies us going back for something that we've lost. But in the same way that Hebrews goes back for old texts and reads them in new, life-giving ways, we can retrieve our wholeness while moving forwards. In the book of Revelation, John shows us a picture of the new Jerusalem. This final vision is not a return to the Garden of Eden. Instead, it is a new way of dwelling with God which transforms all the hurt and pain of a fallen world. The Israelites were afraid to enter Canaan because it was so new and strange, but eventually there, they found a home. So as we encounter people and communities carrying trauma, Hebrews shows us a way. Recovery is a wandering from pain to healing, and that recovery is guided by the living and active voice of God, if only today we will hear that voice. And I'm here today to tell my story and to share the part that Hebrews has played in it as part of my own journey to remake myself into a transformed wholeness that tries to put Christ at the center. And I am here, like the author of Hebrews, in front of an audience inviting you all to do the same. We don't need to be afraid of the newness and uncertainty of wandering. In the space between brokenness and redemption, Egypt and Canaan, Good Friday and Easter Sunday, Eden and the New Jerusalem, there is new life to be recovered from old traditions. If only, like Hebrews, we can hear them as the voice of God. Recovery is a remaking of ourselves and our communities as we pay attention to that voice. Thank you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks that in your death and resurrection, you point to a Sabbath rest for the people of God. Help us to seek your truth in all our work and conversations and long for our rest in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In all our doubts, uncertainties, and troubles, Lord, help us to hear and listen to your voice. Sustain us as we grow towards you. Give us hearts and minds that are not hard, but open to your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember before you those who are enduring a hard struggle with suffering, those who are sick or troubled, those who are struggling with their mental health, those who are abused and persecuted, and those who stand in solidarity with them. Give them confidence in your love and mercy, and help them never to waver from it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
And Lord, we beseech you mercifully to hear the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they may both perceive and know what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to fulfill them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.